The U.S. military is warning about what analysts have described as a major expansion of China's nuclear missile silo fields at a time of heightened tension between Beijing and Washington. The U.S. military is warning about what analysts have described as a major expansion of China's nuclear missile silo fields at a time of heightened tension between Beijing and Washington. The field in the Xinjiang region is the second one reported this summer. In June, researchers at the James Martin Center for Nonproliferation Studies in California identified another field under construction in neighboring Gansu province. The reports come at a time when relations between the U.S. and China have plunged to their worst level in decades. The two nations remain sharply at odds over a range of issues, including trade, technology, cybersecurity, human rights, and China's increasingly assertive foreign policy under President Xi Jinping. Two researchers from the Australian Institute of Tropical Health and Medicine have begun studying if parasitic worms can be used to protect soldiers from chemical and biological weapons. Molecular parasitology professor Alex Laukas and Dr. Paul Jukoman are studying the possibility that the Helminth genome can produce therapeutic molecules to protect humans against bioterrorism agents. Helminths are parasitic worms that live inside the human body, infecting billions of people. The intent of the project is to reduce the burden of soldiers and medical responders who have to wear personal protective equipment when at risk of chemical or biological attack. Laukas pointed out that although there are antibodies with anti-organophosphate drug properties available on the market, he and his colleagues will continue their work on genetically modified parasites that protect troops from chemical or biological exposure. The Ministry of Defense say that a special ceremony held at Space Command Headquarters, RAF High Wycombe yesterday marked the official opening of UK Space Command, with the first space operator badges presented to personnel. When at full operating capability, UK Space Command will provide command and control of all of Defense's space capabilities, including the UK Space Operations Center, RAF Filingdales, Skynet and other enabling capabilities. Under the leadership of Air Vice Marshal Paul Godfrey, the Joint Command will have oversight of all space capability development in the Ministry of Defense. The U.S. Navy conducted its first test flight of the MQ-4C Triton in its upgraded hardware and software configuration on July 29 at Nas Patuxent River, beginning the next phase of the unmanned aircraft's development. The MQ-4C Triton flew in its new configuration, known as Integrated Functional Capability, IFC, minus 4, which will bring an enhanced multi-mission sensor capability as part of the U.S. Navy's Maritime Intelligence, Surveillance, Reconnaissance and Targeting, MISR anti, transition plan. Australia is slated to acquire at least three, and possibly seven Triton aircraft in the IFC-4 configuration. In U.S. Navy service, the Triton is designed to replace the Lockheed P-3C Orion Maritime Patrol aircraft and complement the Boeing P-8A Poseidon. It will also replace the U.S. Navy F-3 Ares Signals Intelligence SIGINT, platform, meaning the aircraft will provide Australia with a significant SIGINT capability beyond that offered by the current AP-3C, U, Orions and future MC-55A Peregrine fleets. The first variant of the Canadian Army's new Armoured Combat Support Vehicle, ACSV, rolled off the production line at General Dynamics Land Systems Canada in London, Ontario, in late December. Light Armoured Vehicles, LAV, have protected Canada's soldiers on missions abroad for over 40 years, and it is a privilege to continue this tradition with the rollout of this first ACSV variant, said Jason Monaghan, the company's vice president and general manager, during a virtual event on May 3 to mark the milestone. The first vehicle a troop cargo vehicle, TCV, is one of 360 and eight variants that will be delivered to the Army over the next four years. GDLS Canada was awarded a contract valued at about $2 billion in August 2019 to build the ACSV, based on the LAV 6.0 chassis that provides the backbone of the Army's combat vehicle fleet.